Take a look at the jet engine of any commercial airplane. For example, the Boeing 777 and the Boeing 787. You will notice that none of these components inside can move and during flight the engine will stay a fixed shape. It will not change in geometry at all. However, when it comes to flying supersonic, planes such as the Concorde, the F-18, the F-22 and the F-35 have multiple technologies such as inlet guide vanes, variable nozzles and also ramps that can move during flight to adjust and manipulate the airflow. Have you ever wondered why this occurs and why is it important? Well, this video will talk about that in detail. Before we get started, we have some fundamentals of compressible flow that we need to look at in order to understand this better. First of all, we have the Mach number, which is the speed of the air divided by the speed of sound at that operating point. When Mach number exceeds a certain value, the air can be compressed because the density can change due to high pressure. This is the fundamental backbone of how a rocket engine works and I have a video talking about that in detail. Supersonic aircraft operate in a similar manner. They also have nozzles and inlets. In compressible flows, fluid behaves differently. When the area increases, the flow actually speeds up as opposed to, for example, your tap. When you open the tap, the flow slows down because the area is increasing and the fluid will decrease in velocity. Here we have a supersonic jet engine and it consists of a diffuser, a compressor, a combustor and an exhaust. We're going to be looking at the diffuser and a diffuser is a device that slows down the air to a speed lower than the speed of sound. Just like in rocket engines where you have a nozzle and the function of that is to speed up the air, a diffuser is opposite to a nozzle. We can take a closer look at the diffuser and break it up into sections. You have the intake, you have the midsection and the exit. Based on the size of this midsection with respect to the intake and the exit, these diffusers are designed for a specific Mach number and you can obtain this from a table and from the compressible flow relations. So as the pilot speeds up the airplane to achieve a supersonic speed, initially since the flow is going very slowly, it's obviously less than the speed of sound and you will have a subsonic speed at the exit. But as the pilot keeps speeding up, it'll get to a point where the flow at location 2 will choke and it will achieve the speed of sound because as you recap in fluid mechanics, if you have a flow going from a bigger area to a smaller area, it'll increase in velocity. And at this point, when the flow at location 2 equals the speed of sound, you will have a normal shock which forms before the inlet. The inlet cannot suck in any more air and it's restricted by the conditions at 2. As the pilots speed up the airplane, the shock will move towards the inlet. And when they get to the design Mach number, which is MD, at this point, the plane cannot fly properly because you have a shockwave there. The whole idea is to get rid of the shockwave. So what pilots do is that they perform something called overspeeding, in which they speed up the plane beyond the design Mach number. And what happens now is that the shock will get swallowed. The shock goes inside the diffuser and it'll reach a point where it is at location 2. When the pilots slow down back to the design Mach number or the design speed of the airplane, the shock will disappear. Now why does this happen? It's because when the shock gets in the diffuser, it, it gets weaker and weaker because it's been constrained. At this point, you finally have the operating conditions and you have a subsonic velocity at the exit with no shockwave in there. Pilot cannot fly the plane much faster than the design Mach number for too long because it'll cause structural damage and it can also affect the wing aerodynamics. So since this phenomenon of overspeeding is a problem for airplanes, this is why planes like the F-18 Super Hornet use a variable nozzle in which you can adjust the area of location to. You can do this to eliminate shock waves and always achieve isentropic flow because when the area ratio matches the Mach number, you will have no shocks anywhere. Also, if you look at the Blackbird, the SR-71 Blackbird, it has the tip and this function is to create a shock wave to slow it down. But the thing is that it is designed in such a way that the shock does not affect the aerodynamics of the airplane. Similarly, the Concorde has ramps to adjust the airflow and the areas of the inlet so that the shocks will not affect the performance of the airplane. My name is Vinayak and I would like to welcome you to my channel VD Engineering. I am currently an aerospace engineer working in the industry and the goal of this channel is to just grow and 
pursue students to be, be more passionate about the aerospace and aviation field. My channel covers videos on flight simulation, fluid mechanics, computational fluid dynamics, rocket propulsion, and more topics. The goal of this channel is to just spread around the world because aerospace is a very growing field and there are a lot of jobs that need to be filled, especially very specialized roles. And my goal is to just spread knowledge and to you know grow as a community on YouTube because there, there are not that many channels which are covering my content. And with that being said, if you're new here, I do recommend you subscribe if you want more videos like this on aerospace engineering. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.